What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, August 30th, the last day of the month. Hope everybody is looking forward to a great Labor Day weekend. Don't forget, uh, Monday, the markets are closed, so we'll be back at it on Tuesday. So enjoy your long weekend. Let's get into uh, who got caught being hot this week to start with. Uh, this week goes to Sarah Walker. Sarah started a great conversation about tracking trade, portfolio management. Uh, she herself uh, is a newer trader, but she has been very helpful in answering other new traders' questions. So love to see that. Uh, really happy to have you in our community, Sarah. Keep up the good work. You got caught being hot. And so let's jump into the alerts for the week. Um, starting with Monday's alerts on the 26th. Let's get back to the first one there. Okay, so we we had a double calendar on, our weekly double calendar in SPX, and we were able to squeak out a, uh, a little bit of a profit. Got a tiny winner on that one. I think it was 100 bucks on that one. Uh, so uh, got that nice move up that morning and we're able to, to book a tiny profit. It was in a losing position, so we're able to squeak out a nice little one in that. Uh, next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ZB in the bonds. So uh, if you've been following these, the bonds have been a little bit of a thorn in our side, to say the least. They just continue to rally, starting to get a little bit of a contraction back to the downside this week. Uh, so hopefully that continues. We get some sideways, down to sideways, kind of two-sided action. Let's take a look at ZB. So this is the one that we rolled. And so you can see price is sitting right here, uh, fairly close to center here. So just waiting for some more time to pass, some theta to decay in our favor on that piece. And then we've got this other inverted strangle, uh, which is, you know, price is way out here. And you can see this is kind of a range here. So we need, uh, we are, we're actually at 21 days to expiration on this piece. And so we could have rolled that today. I'm just holding it over the long weekend, see if we can't get a little bit more down movement early next week before we roll that out to November as well. Uh, so let's take a look at the charts of bonds. Obviously, we've had this huge rally with the Fed being dovish and hinting at interest rates uh, continuing to decline. That's uh, inverse correlation to bonds. So bonds are, have, have been set higher. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of just bounce around here or potentially, you know, contracting down would be even better. But this is kind of the game that we play, just staying mechanical with our roles and making those adjustments to get back to profits in bonds. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in ZW, which is wheat. We entered with 60 days to expiration, added another iron condor in wheat. And so let's take a look at that trade. Uh, wheat's down about 2.5% today, so pretty decent move, and it's been on a pretty solid downhill slide for, for quite a while here. Uh, but this is our iron condor here. Price is kind of hanging out in the lower end of the range right here. Nothing to do yet, but wait. You know, If price does continue lower, we'll look to add potentially another centered iron condor around the price at that point, but uh, just holding for now. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added a, or excuse me, we opened a weekly iron condor in SPX. Um, a few days later, price made a, a pretty significant move higher. So a few days later, we went ahead and opened a, a double calendar as well. So we've got these two different pieces. We've got one double calendar and we've got one weekly iron condor in SPX. So let's go to the platform and take a look at both of those. We go to SPX. Here is our weekly iron condor. Obviously, we put this on when it was dead centered. Price has made a significant move higher. So right now we're hanging out right near the right near the break-even point. Keep in mind, uh, Tuesday is the last day of trading for for this one. Um, let me get my screen in here a little bit better. Uh, Tuesday is the last day of trading on this expiration cycle. Oops. There we go. Uh, so we're going to be taking this off Tuesday morning. So obviously we hope we can get a, just a little bit of a sharp move lower. If we can get a, a nice move lower and profit line at that point will be up here. So that would be a nice one. Obviously, if if price continues to rip higher over the weekend, opens up on Tuesday morning higher, we're going to take a loss on this trade. So keep that in mind in, in managing for your own 
overall risk tolerance. Uh, next, the other piece of this, not the other piece, but the other trade that we have in SPX was this double calendar that we put on. You can see prices hanging out right here. So we've got a little bit of profit uh, just holding on to this uh, until we get some more profit uh, potential here. If we go to the trade tab, you can kind of see what we've got. The double calendar's got seven days to expiration and that weekly iron condor has four. So that's where we're at on our weekly income SPX trades. Those have been working out nicely. Had some big close winners. I just I just recorded the uh, monthly recap for all of our close trades, so you'll be you'll be seeing that come out uh, either today, later today, Friday, or tomorrow on Saturday as well. Um, oh, oh, the other thing I was going to show you just on on the SPX chart. You know, this thing has just been really. I mean, it's, it's, we've had some really violent moves down, violent moves up, violent moves down, violent moves up, and just and but we're really just kind of kind of staying right in this little kind of a, a box here. So not that that really means anything from a support and resistance or, or channel thing, but you know, the way I look at this is, is at some point it's going to break out either, uh, either to the upside or to the downside. And it's probably going to be a pretty decent size move if I had to guess. And so just kind of watching this, I mean, we're at the upper end of this little kind of range here. So if, it'd be nice if we kind of roll over and, and get back down. Uh, but, you know, you don't know. I mean, this thing could just continue to rip higher. We could go to new highs and we just have to manage accordingly. So that's just kind of where we're at on the S&P 500. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZW. So I already showed you the, the new iron condor that we added. And then on this one, we closed this out, booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. Uh, so getting back to uh, close to um, uh, profits in ZW. Uh, we're, we're still down. Uh, we're still down some, but we are uh, working our way back in ZW. We've had that ZW iron condor on just kind of adding, taking them off for quite a long time now. Will be nice once to just kind of get, get out of that and start with a clean slate, but still working our way back in ZW. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in EWZ. So we had one short strangle on Price kind of got down to the lower end of the break, uh, lower end of the range in that one. So we added another EWZ short strangle. And so let's go to the platform and take a look at that. Our other one we ended up taking off today. So the, this is the only one that we do have on now. And you can see price has moved up since we put that on, but still well within range. So just waiting on this one uh, to, uh, to do anything there. Next trade was a closing trade in Intel. So this is a short strangle that we put on in Intel uh, right after the earnings and, and the stock moved significantly against us right from the get go. So we were, we were down trying to manage back, made several adjustments, rolls, and we were able to uh, book a tiny profit overall, basically a scratch trade, but going from being down significantly, working our way all the way back to a scratch, uh, very powerful, technique. That's why we stay mechanical. That's why we teach the way we do as far as our roles and adjustment strategy. So we are out of the Intel trade now. Next trade was the opening trade of the uh, double calendar in SPX. I already showed you that. And then we had a closing adjusting trade in forward slash GC. So we, uh, we closed one set of our iron condors in gold, booked almost 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And now we're still holding our other remaining short call vertical. We also added another iron condor this morning. So I'll go over that here in just a second before we go to the platform. Next trade was a closing trade in CRM. So this is one that we put on as a post earnings short put vertical right after the, they announced earnings. Uh, just like we teach in the course, if a stock moves above and beyond that expected move to the upside, there's a good chance that it's going to kind of grind steady to higher. Uh, in this case, CRM got caught in the downdraft with the rest of the market. Let's go to the chart. Um, so you can see here, here is, here is the earnings announcement. It opened up here. And so we put this on right around here, looking for prices to cut this. And this red line represents the expected move. So it opened above the expected move, kind of bounced around here for a while. And then we had that, that was a huge down day in the overall market. And you can say, you can see CRM got caught in that as well. So price went significantly against this right from the get go and then just kind of 
bounced around. Yesterday had a big rally up, and then today had a nice rally up, and we closed out when price was up here. And we were able to book a nice profit, 35% uh, of max profit on the trade. Took a little heat to get there, but still worked out just fine. Uh, we put this on with, uh, with just a couple weeks, so it's going to expire next week. Um, so we wanted to take that off, and uh, we were in a profit position, so that is what we did. Next trade, we had a closing adjusting trade in SMH. So we had two sets of short, uh, short strangles on in SMH. Uh, this one here in September got down today, was with, uh, had 21 days to expiration. So we, we wanted to roll or close that. We opted to just close this piece. And the reason is, is it was dead centered. So any kind of movement in one direction was gonna obviously you know, lessen where we're at from a, from a profit standpoint. We were over 40% of max profit on this piece since our last roll. And just to reduce some exposure, I mean, we're getting such significant uh, implied volatility contraction both yesterday and some today. And so I just wanted to take advantage of that, book that piece, reduce our overall exposure to SMH. And then we're, because we're still holding this other piece out in the October cycle. And if price makes a decent move in one direction, goes kind of near the break even on this one, then we can add back in, you know, jump back in and, and continue to get back to a profitable profitable position in SMH. So let's take a look at uh, where we're at now. This is the remaining piece that we have on. Uh, price is sitting right here, pretty pretty centered. And so just waiting for some more time to pass on that. And like I said, if price gets up here, it gets down here, and if implied volatility is decent, we'll add another centered short strangle to continue to collect that credit and get back to profits in SMH. But it's been acting nice for us over the last couple weeks, so hopefully that continues. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in EWZ. This is the one I mentioned. Uh, we, we took this one off. We had uh, two sets and with this nice move up today. Uh, well, it's actually pretty flat as, as I'm recording this, but it was up earlier this morning. Booked over 45% of max profit on that piece of the trade, and then we're still holding that other short strangle that I showed you in October. And lastly, we did an opening adjusting trade in GC. So we added an iron condor here out in the November cycle with 59 days to expiration. And so now we're still holding that short call vertical piece in the in the previous cycle. And we're holding um, this iron condor that we just added here. So price is sitting right here. I mean, look at the, I even adjusted these, uh, these strikes down a little bit from the 20 delta. Uh, but this just shows you, look at, Look at how much more range you have on the upside than you do on the downside. And that just uh, that just shows kind of that call skew that's going on in gold, meaning the calls are trading richer than the puts. Uh, but but so that's why it's not quite dead centered, even though we just put it on is, just, is because of that call skew. And then the other piece that we have in the previous cycle is that short call vertical. So looking for a little bit of downside movement in gold to get back into range there. So if we can just get down into this range, that would be nice in, in gold, and, and we could get out of that piece. So that's where we're at on all of our alerts. Let's take a look at some of our, some of our other positions, starting with forward slash 6B, the British pound. We've got this short strangle on, uh, pretty close to where we put it on, just kind of dead centered here. No profit or loss, just waiting for some more time to pass in the British pound. In oil, we've got a short strangle on here. Uh, Big move down today, almost 3% move lower, but that just kind of brought us right back to center. So we're up a few hundred bucks, just waiting for some more profit before we do anything there. In ES, the S&P futures, we've got this uh, short bias position that we're holding for that short delta exposure. You can see prices right here on the break even, so just need a little bit of downside to get back into range there. Natty Gas has been playing really nice for us this week. We've had a nice up move in Nat Gas. Uh, getting us back uh, back into range more, getting us back to some more profits there. Um, up about 27, almost 2,700 bucks since we did this roll, which is nice. Both of these pieces, uh, they, they've got 26 days to expiration. So next week, we will look to roll at least one of those out to the next expiration cycle. And depending on how much price movement we get, uh, we might roll both of those. But uh, that's where we're at in Natty Gas. I already mentioned bonds, I mentioned wheat, apple. We've got this uh, long put vertical that we put on for some short delta. You can see price is just out of range here. Could use some downside movement in apple to get back into range. 
Uh, John Deere price is hanging out pretty close to the break even, just inside the range there right here. Uh, so just looking for some more downside to benefit that. DIA, we've got these two sets of short call verticals that we've been rolling for for that short delta exposure. See prices right here, just inside range. EEM, uh, this was a long put, just a just a long put that we put on for some short delta. You can see price has moved up, so we're down a couple at 185 bucks on the trade right now. So just waiting for, just looking for some downside action to benefit that trade. I mentioned EWZ, GS, Goldman Sachs. We've got this long put vertical prices right here, just outside the break even. So looking for some downside action to benefit that. IYR, we've got two different iron condors on. One is this one here out in October, where you can see the price is pretty, pretty well centered up a little bit, just waiting for some more profit. And then on this piece here, which is still in September, Prices, I feel like price has been hanging out in the upper end near this break even for quite a long time. Uh, let's take a look at the chart. Yeah, it's just it's just been kind of bebopping around, just kind of trading sideways for the last couple weeks. And so we could use a little bit of downside movement in IYR to before we book anything there. QQQ, we've got these pretty similar to DIA. We've got these two sets of short call verticals. Price is just outside the break even. Uh, looking for some downside action to get back there. Uh, SMH I mentioned, uh, SPX I mentioned, SPY. So we've got two pieces on here. We've got this short call vertical spread where price is just outside the break even right here. And then we've got a another full iron condor uh, that we put on here where price is, price is pretty centered. So just playing the waiting game on that piece. VXX, we've got this short call vertical spread we've had on for, for a decent amount of time. This is still in September, so we've got still got a significant amount of time left, uh, 21 days. Yeah, 21 days. Uh, so just uh, obviously if, if the stocks continue to rally, that's going to benefit this trade. So uh, this trade will benefit from implied volatility contraction, and so that's what we're looking for there. We put this on back here when we got a spike in implied volatility. The IV spiked up as well as the price of VXX spiked up, thinking it was a good point of entry. And obviously we know what happened after the fact, we got even more of a spike. And so now price has just been uh, bouncing around there and, and you can see where it's at now. So getting back down into range. So we just need a little bit more downside in that to benefit. XLF is the financials. Um, they were looking really weak. I thought we were going to get a little bit of a continuation to the downside. We haven't we haven't really gotten that. We got this. We got in here when price was about right here, and it's moved up a little bit on us. So just looking for some downside uh, to get back into range on XLF. And lastly, XLK, kind of similar story. A lot of these short delta positions are kind of hanging out near the break even, and uh, just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit those. So. Where we're at overall in the uh, scheme of things from a short delta perspective, uh, we're at about two and a half to one, about two to one, two and a half to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. Uh, so definitely got a little bit of a short bias, so could use some more downside action in, in stocks. So hopefully that happens next week. Like I said, everybody have a great long weekend, and we'll catch you back here on Tuesday. Have a good one.